Welcome to Waiver Watch Episode 5 on December 15th, 2019. We are 107waivers.com, and each week we review some of the most interesting waivers that the FAA approved last week. And, as always, we have a special Sesame Street brought to you by letters, a combination of such letters. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I can actually cut that out, so. All right. As always, each week we bring a letter sponsor, acronym sponsor that the FAA and the drone industry uses. This week's sponsors are L-A-A-N-C, or Lance. (laughs) And what does that stand for? (laughs) Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. And what does that mean? That means that when I go onto some cool app like AirMap or Skyward or Kitty Hawk, I can instantly get airspace authorizations for gridded altitudes shown on the UAS facility maps. <laughs> That's so long. He actually had to pull that up on his web browser and just read that because it's, it's too many words. Yes. <laughs> so anyways, Lance, when you want to fly in controlled airspace, you can refer to a facility map that gives you some altitudes, that gives you some guidance on the altitudes you can ask for, and you'll get approved automatically. Everyone should know about this unless you're very, very new into the drone industry. And now we've just told you one of the coolest tools out there. So download AirMap, Skyward, Kitty Hawk, um, and get it done. So you literally can roll up on your job site, work site, put in that authorization, and within seconds you'll be approved to fly as long as you're below the gridded altitude that is shown on the UAS facility maps. Yeah. So I think that'll be a. That was a. I think that's a good separate video someday, just how to do Lance, (laughs) but. Yeah, that was definitely a mouthful. It is. Uh, So, as always, let's jump into the stats to see how awesome last week was and if the FAA was setting any records. It was a good week. Jakey, hit us off. Yeah. How many did we get approved? It was was a good week. Uh, Not the record, but it was a good week. Uh, 43 waivers. Uh, So, I think that's the second highest total we've seen yet. Uh, So, the FAA's working hard to close the year out. We had 40 10729s, daylight operations. We had the other three essentially were 10739s, uh, but we did have mm-hmm. one that was a combination, 10739 and night waiver. So everything was night waivers yep. and, and uh, ops over human beings this week. Right. Yep. So also we had an interesting week because we had a trifecta approval. So the people that are using our services to get approved for their night waivers, we were able to slide three of our documents across their desks one after another, which interestingly enough, they submitted on three separate days as well. That's amazing. So six out of 40 of the night waiver approvals were completed by Mm 107waivers.com. Again, if you don't have your night waiver, go check out our website, sign up for a course. We give you all the documents you need to get your approval. We make it easy and we're always there for any questions you have. So, yeah. And the, with that, the uh, one of them was approved in what, like 21 days or something like that, too? Yeah, that was, like, I, that was actually Judah's. Crazy fast. So, so, he submitted. Either the queue's getting shorter <laughs> or, or we're getting better. I don't know which one, but yeah, they're, they're coming back. I'll go with the second one. We're definitely getting better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, okay. All yeah. right. Back to waivers then. Yeah. Yep, yep. So let's uh, let's talk about this combo this week. I think that's uh, kind of the interesting yeah, the, one. The double. Yeah, and so it's always it's always interesting to see when you get multiple regulations waived in a single uh, waiver. But uh, this one happened to be daylight operations and operations over human beings. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, live productions LLC, and it is a para zero uh, safe air system. Uh, that that actually were was used on all three of the operations over human beings waivers this week. But mm-hmm. um, usually in waivers, it's usually provision number two. It says these this waiver may not be combined with any other waiver authorization or exemption without specific authorization. So normally, let's say you go get your night waiver and you have that document. Now you go get your operations over human beings waiver with para zero or indemnus. You have that document that that those are separate you can't go do night operations over human beings right <laughs> so uh so that's why this is kind of unique it combines them 
and also kind of makes a mess of the provisions, right, Brent? Right. Yeah, so before you know, we jumped on this, we were like really digging into this and like looking, okay, let's go take a night waiver and see the provisions 1 through 13 and match them up with this. So all 13 provisions in a standard night waiver are included in this, except they're kind of sporadically spread out uh, in a few separate sections. Um, and then interestingly enough, when they're calling out a provision that could maybe be confused with a ops or people provision, they do specifically say like, if your operation is at night or during night operations, and then add the provision because some of the technicalities uh, could be construed to like, maybe think that this might be something I have to do when I'm doing ops over people. So mm-hmm. if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this particular waiver request, there's that nice little uh, graph at the bottom yeah, um, or table, right? That shows it's like literally like three sections. It's like during night operations. So just treat that as straight night ops. That's the night ops waiver, the 10729. And then there's another table entry that says operations uh, over non-participants as defined in provision seven. And it lists all the other provisions that are required. And then the last one is during over uh, operations at night during, oops, I'm stumbling on my words, operations <laughs> at night over non-participants. So that's the combination of 107.29 yeah. and 107.29. Um, <laughs> Three, three, three nine. nine. <laughs> the two nines yeah, and the I'm three nines. <laughs> the two nines, I was thinking three, five, like. <laughs> I know. So many. My mind. That's so many waivers. Yeah. Regulations. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it kind of it kind of makes me think that in a way, this actually made his night operations uh, more complicated because at the very For beginning, sure. right, it actually, it, this waiver actually supersedes an older waiver and we're not sure which one it was, but our guess is it was either his night waiver, which would just be like your standard waiver, blanket, you know, all aircraft, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Or it was maybe his old parachute para zero waiver. But now yeah. to go do night ops with any other aircraft, he has to use this waiver and it's I don't know what how many, like forty provisions instead of thirteen. So it, right. thirty it, yeah, thirty six provisions. About, yeah. So so it kinda in a way it actually makes it a complicated to do night ops <laughs> right with, without let's, say, let's say like uh like someone from the fisdo comes out right and s- says yeah hey you're flying at night like show me your night waiver and then you give them this and like well this is ops over people waiver right like, well no it's, it's not it's and Here. or and and this is this is probably where i'd go right to the table at the bottom say here let's read just these provisions because i'm only operating at, at night and oh by the way i'm using inspire 2 now which is not included mm-hmm. in my ops over people waiver because i'm only mm-hmm. approved for mavic yep so yeah. yeah so totally interesting like you said a little bit confusing mm-hmm. but um also if you want to operate at night this is what you have to do right and it might not be We'll have to keep an eye out to see if uh, the FAA is going to continue to do them like this. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, at any rate. Yeah, because when you make the request, uh, I mean, our recommendation would be to go get your night waiver first. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just, you know, do that, have it in in your drone zone, you know, queue essentially. And then when you submit your parachute waiver... There, now there's a option to you know select a waiver from your list when you request something. Uh, so right. that's how you can kind of do these combinations. It, same thing with airspace authorizations. If you want to fly at night and control airspace, you have to do that. But um, yep. our suggestion would be to kind of do those separately. And yeah, like you said, Brian, it'll be interesting to see if uh, they start mm-hmm. like taking away your night waiver and just giving you one instead of having kind right. of separate. So. Right. We'll keep an eye right. on that. So, yeah. We'll keep tabs. Absolutely. Well, speaking of night, what are some other cool things that you can do at night if you get another advanced <laughs> waiver, Jakey? Yeah. So our, <laughs> our the other one we wanted to talk about this week is Intel and drone light shows. This is... Which by far the yeah. sweetest thing you probably can do with drones. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree. It's like such a good use case. You know, get, get rid right. of these expensive, dangerous fireworks and... Uh, yeah. use technology one, instead. One time use explosives yeah. that could start wildfires. Yep. Right. And yeah, there's everyone likes fireworks and likes the noise and everything, but scares the dogs. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's another level uh when it comes to drone light shows, like just the creativity, right? Mm-hmm. That you'll be able to do with a light show. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna be 
once once more and more people are able to get this waiver, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yep. So it's a waiver. So. You know, just hit that quick. It's a it's a night waiver and a one hundred seven three five. It's operational multiple small UAS. So I mean, Intel was mm-hmm. I think the pioneers of this. Although I, we could be wrong about that. If there's somebody out there that thinks you beat Intel to it, uh, let us know. But um, <laughs> these guys, you know, Intel they've been doing Super Bowls, Olympics. I think just some really high profile stuff. It's super cool to see. So, um, just maybe to hit kind of two interesting provisions on there. So we're talking Intel's latest one. It's, um, actually a really old waiver that's been renewed a couple of times. So it's actually like a 2016 waiver, but it's on Charlie revision. But anyways, they have, uh, two interesting provisions. Number 14 talks about, um, ensuring that one system failing does not cause essentially others to fail. So it kind of speaks to this technical mitigation side of this waiver that uh, the the aircraft are all pre-planned, they have safety buffers around them, and the FAA is concerned that you know if one fails and hits others, you're just going to have this huge chain reaction of drones falling out of the sky. So um, that's certainly one of the mitigations and, and things that you have to put in your safety cases. How are you going to kind of protect the herd if one gets sick so um right yeah it's all all just a technical mitigation intel's got some smart people obviously to to work on those but uh why don't we talk about eight, eight, number 18 too brent yeah 18 is uh, another provision in there and that one is basically along the lines of notification so 72 hours prior to the operation or the drone light show uh the responsible party must notify the local FISDO. Ooh, there's another acronym we can share <laughs> in the future. So you can Google FISDO. Good luck spelling it. It's F-S-D-O. <laughs> but, yeah. um, it's, so it's your anyways. local FA employees, by the way. I think it's worth mentioning. I mean, these are the guys that are like in your hometown's uh, right. flight standards district, district office. So, um, yep. so yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so 72 hours prior to your operation, you need to uh, notify them and tell tell them the location of the plant operation, uh, the times that these are going to happen. A co- you have to provide a copy of the waiver. And if you're in controlled airspace, send a copy of the airspace authorization. So I think it's a good thing that you're notifying them because number one, it could be very distracting, say a man pilot, right? Uh, and they call in. It would be nice for the FAA to kind of know, Hey, yeah, don't worry about it. We know what's going on. It's approved. Uh, you know, it's okay. Um, Mm -hmm. also, you know, maybe the FISDA will come out and take a look at what you're doing. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be afraid of the guys coming out, guys and gals coming out to inspect you. Uh, you know, essentially if you're getting these waivers, you're already provide, you've already shown enough due diligence to the FAA that you're responsible operator. So, just have all the paperwork that you've completed and perform exactly what you say. And they're going to be there to watch and they're not even, mm-hmm. they probably won't even bring their paper or their tickets. I've actually never even seen a ticket. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think you get <laughs> the drone police. They don't hand out tickets. <laughs> they don't No, but they would go back to their office and yeah. find something to write on. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now these, these local FISDO guys are cool. I mean, they're they're yeah. excited about this and so these guys are your friends and and the more you can do to interact mm-hmm. with them and just uh help educate them too because i mean they're they're just probably manned yep. pilots they they probably don't fly drones a lot of them so so yeah you right. know i mean make friends and these guys can be kind of your allies so right guys and gals sorry so yeah <laughs> all right well that kind of wraps it up for our two waiver reviews today. We had the Dublé 107.29 and 107.39 combination night and ops over people waiver, which is awesome. And then we pulled out the Legacy Vault. And also, I noticed while you were talking about this one, this is actually a 2016 waiver, but it's 0004. So it's the fourth waiver yeah. in 2016 that Intel got this. So that's kind of cool, too. It's like, an early one. So. Who were the other first three, huh? <laughs> I wonder if they exist. It's too bad you can't search up waiver numbers. I mean, you yeah. can search name, company, waiver, but not the number. So, right. right. Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, so until next time, fly safe. Check out our stuff on YouTube, podcasts, or blah, 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 blah. 
Check us out. Where, Jakey? <laughs> Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. You can read it on our website. Uh, consume it the way you want it. So leave us a comment. Yep. Uh, you know, if you want to know about a certain waiver in the future, we'll, we're happy to do that. So yeah, until next time. Fly safe. Take care.